Hi everyone, this is Team 5 and we are here to discuss to you the science of unitary human beings by Martha E. Rogers. Let's begin. Who is Martha Rogers? She was born in Dallas, Texas, May 12, 1914. As a young child, she was very curious to gain more knowledge and she has passion in reading books. In 1936, she attended a nursing diploma program at Knoxville General Hospital. She continued her schooling at George P. Body College and completed Bachelor of Science in Public Health Nursing in 1937. In 1951, she joined Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore and she completed the Doctor of Science in 1954 while she was working at a Catholic University. After completing her Doctor of Science, she served as the head of Division of Nursing at New York University. Public health nursing was her professional focus back then. In 1963, she edited the second journal in nursing, and during 1975, she retired as head of the Division of Nursing from New York University, and she joined Emeritus University in 1979 as a professor, and she continued to work on the science of unitary human beings till the time of her death in March 13, 1994. Let's go to the major concept. Martha Rogers mentioned four major concepts on her theory. The first one is the pattern. Rogers defined the pattern as the distinguishing characteristic of an energy field seen as a single wave. It is an abstraction and gives identity to the field. Next is pandimensionality. She defined it as a nonlinear domain without spatial or temporal attributes. The parameters that humans use in language to describe events are random, and the present is relative. The theory stated that there is no temporal ordering of lives. Next is the openness. There are no boundaries that stop energy flow between the human and environmental fields, which is the openness in Rogers' theory. It refers to qualities exhibited by open systems, and the theory stated that human beings and their environment are open systems. Last is the energy field. Energy field is the fundamental unit of the both living and the non-living. It provides a way to view people and the environment as irreducible wholes. The energy fields continuously vary in density, intensity, and extent. Let us now discuss the fundamental ideas about the tier or the four major assumptions. First thing is the health. According to Rogers, she uses the term passive health to symbolize wellness and the absence of disease and major illness. She uses health as a value term defined by the culture or the individual. Health and illness are manifestations of pattern and are considered to denote behaviors that are high value and low value. Next is nursing. Rogerian nursing focuses on concern with people and the world in which they live a natural fit for nursing care as it encompasses people in their environments. According to the theory, nursing exists for the care of people and the life process of humans. Next is person. Roger defined person as open system in a continuous process with the open system that is in the environment or the integrality. Within a conceptual model specific to nursing's concern, People and their environment are perceived as irreducible energy field, integral with one another and continuously creative in their evolution. Last is the environment. Rogers defines environment as an irreducible pandimensional energy field identified by pattern and manifesting characteristics different from those of the parts. According to the theory, environmental fields are infinite and change is continuously innovative, unpredictable, and characterized by increasing diversity. Environmental and human fields are identified by wave patterns manifesting continuous mutual change. Let us now go to theoretical assertions. Rogers identified the principles of change such as helicy, resonancy, and integrality. The Halsey principle describes a spiral development and continuous, non-repeating, and innovative patterning. Resonancy, according to this principle, patterning changes with the development from lower to higher frequency. Last is integrality. This principle stresses the continuous mutual process of person and environment. How does the theory relate to the 21st century? Rogers' model, stressing the totality of experience and existence, is relevant in today's healthcare system. 
where a continuum of care is more important than episodic illness and hospitalization. This model provides the abstract philosophical framework from which to view the unitary human environmental field phenomenon. Within the Rogerian framework, nursing is based on theoretical knowledge that guides nursing practice. The professional practice of nursing is creative and imaginative and exists to serve people. It is rooted in intellectual judgment, abstract knowledge, and human compassion. Our group created a case scenario with the application of science of unitary human beings theory. Let's start with the case scenario. Mr. Barry is a 57-year-old businessman. While eating breakfast, Mr. Barry experienced sudden onset slurring of speech, had facial droop on the left side, with mild weakness in left side and upper lower limbs. Mr. Barry's wife, Carmen, spotted this sudden onset of symptoms and immediately called for an ambulance, which arrived within 15 minutes. In regards with his medical history, Mr. Barry has hypertension grade 1 diagnosed 3 years ago, he has diabetes diagnosed 2 years ago, and he has a non-healing small wound on the left big toe started last month. Mr. Barry is a restaurant owner who recently reduced working hours. He lives with his wife and his son. His lifestyle changes over the past three years following diagnosis of hypertension and diabetes. Outside his work, he enjoys playing golf and playing poker with, her, with his friends at least twice a week. He has history of smoking for over 20 years, but he quit three years ago following diagnosis of hypertension and diabetes. He is a social beer drinking drinker as well. While in the hospital, when his condition became stable, he was shifted to the medical ward from the ICU. He looks more relaxed and able to tolerate fluids orally. He had only very mild expressive aphasia, left facial droop, and left hemorrhages that was caused by a stroke. He has no neurological deficits noted by his doctors as well. Mr. Barry was treated in the hospital for three weeks and then discharged. Family members were taught about the care taken at home, and Mr. Barry was able to sit with support in bed, and he can move his right limbs, but is dependent on others for all other activities of daily living. Let us now go to the nursing assessment. Nurses can use the pattern manifestation knowing appreciation in assessing and understanding their patient's care and health condition through holistic approach. The first assessment is in regards of pattern. Mr. Barry has a mild expressive aphasia, left facial droop, and left hemiparesis. He said, I had a big change in my life ever since I was diagnosed with hypertension and diabetes, and now I am not able to move my left leg. I have a facial droop and I can't speak well as I used to. I feel like my situation is hopeless. There is nothing anyone can do and I feel like giving up. Through the concept of pattern, the nurse identified the recognizable characteristics of Mr. Barry's energy field related to his health condition. Next is healthy. Mr. Barry's on treatment. He complies with it. He states, I have to be more organized now in terms of my medications because I don't want to be more ill. He further states, I know that my illness and my current situation right now has a negative impact on my family, but his family is very supportive. It is observed that sometimes he is pleasant and sometimes sad and reclusive. When he was sad, he said, I feel depressed and guilty of my illness. I am not sure what my preacher will bring. In regards of healthy, the nurse was able to recognize Mr. Barry's spiral development from understanding his condition to being depressed about it, but still willing to make way for improvements. Next is resonancy. In Mr. Barry's present condition, he is moving in a single direction towards achieving health within his limitation. He said, I accept my illness. I am willing to use all available resources for me to recover. I guess I'm not afraid to die. His wife stated, we will support and care for my husband throughout his recovery. Last is integrality. As Mr. Barry is ready for discharge, his family has to do some modifications at home. He has to get continuous treatment for his current condition. His wife stated, I do not know how to take care of him and prevent anticipated problems. Through integrality, the nurse recognized the interaction of Mr. Barry and his environmental energy field. Let us now go to the nursing intervention. 
Martha Rogers viewed human being and an environment as an integral. Her assumptions were all about change in environment is linked to change in health and energy field of the individual. The goals of nursing care should be tailored to the individual, his environment, with a focus on maximized body functions and preventing complications. The emphasis of the care should be understanding the patient and self, energy field, and environment. The emphasis should be focused on teaching non-invasive modalities such as therapeutic touch, psychological support, patient and family counseling. The first nursing inter intervention for Mr. Barry would be to assess extent of impairment to identify strengths and deficiencies that may provide information regarding recovery. Next is to change positions at least every two hours and possibly more often if placed on affected sites to reduce the risk of tissue injury. Next is, Mr. Barry already has non-healing wound in left big toe. Dressing should be changed daily and his blood sugar should be monitored. Assist patient self-care abilities and level of deficit for performing ADLs. Provide self-help devices such as extensions with hooks, toilet risers, long-handled brushes, drinking straw, leg bed for catheter, or shower chair. Next is assist patient with exercise and perform RMA exercise for both the affected and affected side. Teach the patient to use an affected side to exercise his affected side. Next is patient has mild expressive aphasia. Provide alternative methods of communication such as writing, pictures, speak slowly and calmly using simple words and sentences, gestures may be used to support verbal cues as well. This is to enable the patient to manage for self-enhancing independence and self-esteem, reduce reliance on others for meeting own needs, and enables the patient to be more to be more socially active. Last is assess the anxiety of the client and family. Encourage them to verbalize their feelings, educate them regarding the disease condition, treatment, prognosis, and home care management and also support communication between family and friends or the patient, go through process of grief, discuss lifestyle changes, discuss changing role within the family. Let us now go to the client goal and client evaluation. While setting the client goals and evaluation, nurse should keep in mind that according to Martha Rogers, voluntary mutual patterning is the continuous process whereby the nurse assists client in freely choosing with awareness ways to participate in their well-being. The first patient goal for Mr. Barry is to meet the self-care needs. The evaluation would be the client able to perform activities of daily living within his limits and family member assisting and encouraging client. Second goal is the client maintains intact skin for a prolonged rest. The evaluation would be the client drink a recommended amount of fluid, he performed daily exercises, taking healthy diet, the family members understand instruction and following it. The third goal is to reduce client's isolation. The evaluation would be client verbalized that he feels good, he enjoys sorts of entertainment, he can play poker and, and other games with friends, and the family members actively involved in decreasing client social isolation. The fourth goal for Mr. Barry is to provide adequate knowledge. Under the evaluation would be understand this is process and its own complication and verbalize understanding of home care management. The last goal would be to minimize patient and family anxiety. The evaluation would be client and family able to verbalize their feelings and use diversion therapies when needed. In conclusion, Martha Rogers' theory, The Science of Unitary Human Beings, has had a strong impact on health and nursing. But more clearly, it is important to note that by emphasizing both an individual's inherent worth as well as how the individual relates to the environment, Rogers helped improve patient-centered nursing practice. Under Rogers' model, the concept of health expands beyond the body to the mind and even more impressively, the relationships a patient has. This allows nurses to assess patients based on their psychosocial functioning in the world. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for watching.